Hi, everybody. Um, oh, Dave, hello. Uh, and welcome to the Just Women Sports NWSL mock draft. We have some really amazing guests with us today. Um, I know everybody knows Dave, so I'll start there because he is um, the easiest one to describe. He is a completely biased Houston Dash fan. Um, <laughs> He also is the founder of Beast Mode Soccer. He is a trainer to so many incredible and amazing athletes from all over the world. And yet we are pumped to have him back and chatting with us as always. I know that sounded formal, Dave, just like let it go. <laughs> let me, the, just let me like get through the intro. Um, we also have Carm. Oh, Scott. I wanted to say hello, like, hi everyone. Oh, sorry, anything you'd like to say, Dave? I'm just here to mock the draft. <laughs> Um, we also have Carmen Moscato, a good personal friend of mine. So I was so excited she was able to come. She is our resident Canadian here. We needed a little international <laughs> flair. She is an Olympic bronze medalist. She is, was a longtime player for Team Canada, played with the Breakers, Chicago and the Rain. Did my uh, rounds. Got that correct. <laughs> and recently she's been with working with professional soccer in Canada and also with CONCACAF. Thank you, Carm. Wow. Thank you so much. She's also Thank recently you. engaged. Very cool. Thank you for all that. that you did your research for sure. I really I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. We also so have, happy to be I, know, here. I did do my research. All right. Um, we also have Steph McCaffrey. Steph, we are so excited to have you here. Steph was a fifth round draft pick to Boston, which is much, much higher than I went. Um, but that's okay. Uh, she played there for two years, went to the Red Stars for a while. You guys never crossed at the Red Stars, did you? We didn't. I wish we did. Oh, did you what did you at the same time? From Boston to... We crossed paths when I was training with the Breakers <laughs> in college. Yeah, I'm much older than Steph. <laughs> so she was training with the squad. I love that. Um, yeah. But yeah, got traded, you uh, <coughs> medically retired, but you are currently getting your MBA at Wharton, which is super dope. And you started a nonprofit uh, called Hidden Gem Soccer. Definitely go and check that out. But everybody, we are so thankful, Steph, so thankful to have you guys here. I'm also a Houston Dash fan. Dave stole my phone. <laughs> I kind of wrote Steph in because I lied and said, all we're gonna do is mock the draft. So I love that. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm totally yeah. impartial, so that's, I don't know where that goes tonight. Well, that's so Canadian of you, Carl. It's <laughs> Genuine. And I'm, I'm excited to see, like, everybody's strategy in this, you know, like, what? I mean, who's, who's going to pull Abby out of retirement, you know, like, where, <laughs> where is this going to go? Why are you stealing my jokes from a text message? <laughs> there's like, no, there's no proof of that. Everyone, Americans are funny. They, they know that's not for you. Steph, get off your phone. I see you keep glancing down. What? You're, delu you're literally delusional. My phone's behind the computer. I need you to focus. <laughs> I'm setting up my notes for the mock draft. Did you even prepare? Oh, you exactly. Set notes. I did too, Dave. I've got Let's notes see. handwritten. Nobody yeah. could read them though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. same. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna. I decided to do this. I was like, hey, what's the best setup? But I wanted to go kind of chronologically. So they came out right. Louisville joined, they hired a coach, and then they set up the rules for this expansion draft. So I was going to run through the rules, but I kind of, the way I'm feeling about what we're doing here is that it's kind of like, you know, what was that show? Um, Whose line is it anyway, where it's like the rules are made up and the points don't matter. That's what they said, I think. Like, that's kind of this. But for the sake of this, we will go through the actual rules of the draft. Can I give Yeah, just All right, so the actual rules. Uh, each, sorry, each team, only Louisville gets to draft. <laughs> Louisville can select up to two unprotected U.S. women's national team players. Um, if, they if they select a U.S. women's national team player from a team, the rest of the team then becomes protected. If they choose not to select one or both of their U.S. national team players, they receive $75,000 in allocation money. So they can get up to $150,000 to spend on international players, draft picks, et cetera. Um, if they choose to not select a national team player, they can then select up to two players from any team is how this is written out. Um, I did like that they said that you could select up to 18 players, but obviously that's not physically possible anymore because 
next topic of Chicago. So I'm excited that we have two former Chicago Red Stars here. Yes. And I'm always excited you're here, Dave, that we have two former Chicago Red Stars here because I want to see if you guys think what Chicago did was a good idea. So I'll, I'll lay it out. Chicago got full team immunity for all their national team players and their entire roster by sending to Louisville, Yuki Nagasato, Savannah McCaskill, a, the fifth draft pick this year and an international spot for 2020, 20 and 2021. Thoughts? So Let's go first. Up. Yeah, I'll go first. I think, um, first of all, I want to know if I'm on Chicago's protected list because all of the retired <laughs> players, right? The, you know, every other retired player gets to see their name and the lights on the draft. And there's me probably buried in the secrecy. So I'm very upset about that. Um, <laughs> we'll never you know, know who would have been selected. <laughs> we don't know. And now, yeah, like I lost my, my moment is taken from me. My last moment in professional sports um no but I do think it was a good move um and I think it was a good move for a few reasons one is Chicago's had the best core the most consistent I think core group of players other than North Carolina over the last four years um they like they're a, I don't want to say they're a shoe in for the playoffs but I think like when you list at the beginning of the season like who are the powerhouses in this league the Red Stars are always top of mind um so one you're keeping that core and the other thing is that they have the rights to Sam Kerr, who I think has been the most dominant player in history in this league. Um, no one knows, and I have no inside information on in how long she's going to stay in Europe for. But when I realized that they retained her rights, getting her back in three years when she's 28 and maybe at her peak um, is going to be a huge, huge benefit to the Red Stars. And why, even though Yuki's amazing, her band's electric, very sad to see her go. Same thing with Savannah. She's a good young player. I think retaining that core and retaining Sam's rights, who's so young right now, made the most sense for them. Very good. I mean, listen, that was a fantastic analysis. But also, I like what she said about the consistency of the core. You don't get that luxury in pro sports. So the fact that they're building their own little identity, uh, it was a few casualties for long-term sustainability. So for me, that makes, from a strategic standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and also, you know, I... I they've protected who they needed to in terms of their uh, U S players, but the Sam Kerr one, I've never thought of that. And she will be at her peak at 28. So this, this is going to lead into, I think your next topic cops, which is all the European players and how there's so many on this list that you don't actually know their futures. And it adds a lot of doubt for Louisville. So Sam Kerr is a great example of that. The European uh, connection. Good job. Steph. Do you think I'll ask you, Dave, do you think Chicago, and I know they didn't have, they had a, I would say an okay 2020, albeit it was a, year, a weird year. Do yeah. you think because of these trades, they won't be as good next year? So like short-term next season? A fantastic question, Haley. Thank you. Um, and I'll just like to say that analysis is why I demanded Stephanie McCaffrey join this call. <laughs> because she is thinking so far ahead, probably further ahead than the actual Red Stars organization. <laughs> because if they see this, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 that's why we did it. A good idea. Um, <laughs> I definitely think, like, Yuki is a big loss, right, because she's a feeder. Um, and McCaskill, like, she still needs to potentialize. Um, and hopefully she'll do that in Louisville. But it does leave them a little bit weaker, but it's still too early to say, because you know there's going to be all sorts of shit going on with this draft. Yeah. There's going to be people, like, trading their grandmother's first <laughs> draft pick right, to 2034. Dave, do you think Chicago will take a hit in the short term? Yes. <laughs> that's it. That's all. That's it? No, yeah, like, with, with, with Yuki, she's class, right? Um, she feeds the forwards and obviously they, they missed Sam this year. Um, and McCaskill was in my mind yet to potentialize, but she was on her way to do that. Um, but as always, you, you don't know what's going to happen in this draft. Like they can't touch Chicago players, but I don't know. I just always feel those like there's mass conspiracy already happening with all these teams. 
Totally. And I've got a few theories that I'm willing to explore today. Of course, Haley, that's if you don't claim them as your own, stealing from our group text message. You haven't um, told me them yet, so I don't know how I would. Just like the app you want. Yeah, yeah. But I would steal that. Um, okay, should any other team do this? Like what other, what other, you know, NWSL team should like go in and try to claim their immunity based on their unprotected players? Well, first of all, like, can you do, when did this rule happen? I think they actually, I saw it in an article, but they were like, are you allowed to do this? And Rory was like, I just asked. This is like Survivor, where like you can get immunity tokens. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's supposed to be an expansion draft. So wild that this is even allowed. I don't have a comment on whether or not other teams should do it, but Carm, you can go ahead. It's just, it's just another yeah. step rule, isn't it? Yeah, they're just, I mean, it's kind of like flying, you know, it's like flying by the seat of your pants. Yes. Um, there's something about, you know, the league, like managing this, obviously clubs can cut deals and such, but there doesn't seem to be blanket rules around this. So if I were to think of another club, I want to ask actually the group, if I look at the most interesting unprotected list and why they would go about that, it would be Portland. They, they basically said here, take most of our players. Um, and the other ones have gone about it very, I think a little bit more tightly. So to strike a deal, every, every club wouldn't be afforded this opportunity. So what am I missing here? Is there something that I'm not understanding? Like Chicago gets to be protected by giving up some gems. Portland's given up their whole roster, clearly just a different way to go about it, all their keepers, et cetera. So what am I missing? What do you think these, these clubs are thinking about? And why didn't all of them do this? I mean, and well, now I'm wondering if like more teams are like, oh, you know, oh shit, we need to protect our sides. Like if I'm Orlando, I'm looking to cut a deal. If I'm Seattle, I'm looking to cut a deal. If I'm Portland, I'm yeah. looking to cut a deal. But at what point does, you know, Lisa jump in and be like, whoa. That's wait, what I mean, as like, a commissioner. We've got to get on Twitch Thursday night. Like we need something to happen. Yeah, yeah but, I, go ahead, go on. Um, I, I was just surprised from Portland's perspective or just the group, I was shocked they left Tobin unprotected. I know she's in I, with Man United. But if, I, if I'm picking players, like, to build a team or best players in the world, she's in my top three. So I think that, like, I under, like, Lindsay's obviously unbelievable. Crystal's unbelievable. Um, but what do you guys think of that decision in terms of Portland? I think they're daring people to do it because, you know, one of the big things that are going around is, like, good luck getting these players to leave their markets. Like, it's going to be an unsuccessful thing. However, you can use them as leverage to negotiate other bigger and better more comprehensive packages, like more draft picks and whatever the case, but it's really a bluff. Like, I think they're just saying, yeah, try to take these players from these markets. Um, yeah. Louisville wouldn't do it, is what I'm thinking. I think most people too protected their younger players. Like most people, you know, they're like, all right, Lindsay and Crystal, they are, they're younger than Becky and Tobin. So they had to make a choice, they did it. Same thing with, you know, Krieger and um, Ashlyn. You know, same thing with Carly. You're right. Like, they're like, they're probably not going to leave their markets. They're not going to be here next year. We dare you to do something, you know, see, see what happens. The fact that they get 75K for not taking anyone in any of these temptations each, you know, like up to 150K, you can do a lot with a lot of young players with that money. So for me, they're just like empty temptations. I don't think they're going to be fulfilled. I just love the fact that you're using the word temptation, but we've already discovered <laughs> we're trying to go for a survivor thing, not temptation. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed Although the thing. it is kind of like a mix of the both. I would take, <laughs> I would take Press and Tobin, and then I would go back to Portland and be like, give me Lindsay Horan, and you can have the rights to both of them. Because you know that's where they're going to want to end up playing. Yeah. You're welcome for that knowledge. That's like one of the dynamics of the league though, that is always, you know, comes into question of that, of like, you know, we're always sort of bending and breaking around, you know, like national team players and, and making sure that they're in markets and places that we want to be in, um, which is just kind of the, it's the reality of the league and it has been the reality of the league. And I, I think you're right. I mean, I, what was it last time the last expansion draft that happened, I mean, it was completely premeditated. They knew that the whole transaction was going to send Kling to Portland, send Alex to Orlando where Servando was. You know what I mean? Like there was this big, I think Kalen got sent as well. 
Um, it was basically this big premeditated dance that ended up happening, which, yeah, you got to think that something like that's going to happen again. Yeah, I think, and Dave stole my previous, of course, I said this in the pre-show when it was just us and Dave stole it. I think nice. if I'm Louisville, I'm taking Tobin and Press and um, trying, like, I just think they're the two best national team players available. And I think when I, I think you can do something with the, the leverage of their rights. I think that even their playing rights are worth more than $75,000 each. And I think that you can do a lot. I think they have a lot of good years left in them. Um, but yeah, I don't know how old they are, 31 or 32. But I think three or four years out of them in terms of playing rights is worth more than the money. So I'm taking them and seeing what I can do with it. What if they love England? Though? I was just going to say, I have a debate about that. I think their futures are... The futures are a little bit too unknown, like in the sense of their European, uh, they might want to see their careers out there. They're like, they're absolutely smashing the league there. They might be comfortable. Yeah. Like I don't have, I personally don't have visibility on if they're wanting to come back or not. I don't know that, but um, I think that's a risk because of where they are currently. Dave, yeah. you're the English, oh, sorry, Dave, you're the English expert. Like, are they loving life in Manchester? Like, are they... I'm going to be honest, I went to Manchester once and I got there and I was like, you know, you're kind of like expecting that English vibe and I got there and I'm like, I kind of feel like I'm in Philadelphia, but. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it's a lovely place to visit Manchester. It really is. It's beautiful. Wouldn't want to live there. You know, especially in the winter. I don't know. Maybe I'm a wimp now. No, but no, no. it comes right. They could, they could be loving life there. I know like United, or United have got a good setup now. But yeah. I also see them both coming back. And when they come back, I think they'll want to be on a Portland, um, whatever cool team they want to be on. You know, they can, they can re-ink up it with, you know? Should we just do like the, like move the US Women's National Team to Portland? May as well <laughs> at this point. And then just like have a league. Obviously, yeah. like, that would be tough to replace like during the Olympics and the World Cup, but <laughs> some championship for a full series. All right, okay, we will move on because that also there's also a handful of Canadian players that were left unprotected. I know we I'll, I'll read the full list of U.S. player U.S. national team players that are unprotected right now, just for context. It is Ashlyn Krieger, Adriana French, Becky Tobin. Megan Rapino, Carly Lloyd, and Press. Um, there's also a handful of unprotected Canadians. In uh, you know, we with our resident Canadian, we need some uh, insight here. We've got mm -hmm. Steph LeBay, Shalina, Diana Matheson, and Desi, all unprotected. Yeah. Um, so insights with regards to that list, and I'm always going to be a big uh, fan of my gals. But um, yeah, at the end of the day. This kind of, you know, you look at uh, where this is going to get into strategy, right? So if I think of those Canadian internationals, tons of caps, amazing experiences, veterans, um, you know, I would build around players like that with that profile, whether they're Canadian or U.S. It's not really the point. Internationals with, with caps are huge. So for me, that's a very attractive list. Yes, probably tail end of, of careers. No doubt about that. Uh, but if you're going to have that argument, well, you, you want some stability, I'd go with, I'd pick easily. Uh, almost all of those. And I'm not saying that as a political answer, uh, but it'd be great to build around Steph Labbe. Uh, the Scott in the midfield, you know, I don't know what Louisville's plan is because you would get the vets and then build young players around them so you could yeah. actually give them an identity. So they give you stability. Is anyone else feeling strong on the Canadian insight? I mean, I'm, I'm, I learned a long time ago, just never argue with a Canadian. Just... When'd you learn that? <laughs> KK. Oh, good point. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. She usually wins. <laughs> yeah. um, fantastic insights. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah. I, I, think, love, I love your Canadian bias. I have it. I, I like admit that. it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think you look at somebody like Shalina. Some of these players, you kind of wonder, okay, like, you're right. Picking them up would be amazing because you're not – you know, if, if you want experience and you don't want to give up 75K, you go for one of these more experienced Canadian players. Um, I don't know if Shalina will come back from England. I don't, I, again, I don't have any insight on that, but she, for me, seems like one that's enjoying her time and is doing well over there. Um, 
and you're right like some of the you know there's injury question marks and things like that but I agree I think like both Diana Matheson and Desi are people I would easily build a team around they're great yeah true leaders yeah yeah Beth, any Canadian insight before we move on, or are you just... No, I think what Carm said is true. In general, um, you see a lot of big moments in this league out of people that have international experience. I think, like, whether it's U.S. or Canada players, like, they, there's a general consensus where they tend to miss a lot because of camps and World Cups and Olympics. But when they come back, they make a big splash. Um, and I think that they have a lot of experience leading under pressure. Um, and Louisville is going to be pretty young because they're building off of like a draft and a lot of younger players that might be like diamonds in the rough that were unprotected. So getting some international experience, it's going to be the spine of your team and your leadership makes a lot of sense to me. Very true. Okay, last one. Um, there's a handful of internationals on there. We, we can kind of get to that as we go on. But this to me is the most exciting is the fact that they have to list playing rights, right? I got to, we obviously, Steph, we don't know that, um, you know, we don't know if you would have been able to be graphics. So I'm really sorry that you don't get to go through that experience. But again, like we don't have any rules here, so we can still do it. Um, but there are some really fun, you know, people I feel like, you know, that Louisville could attempt to convince to drag out of retirement. Now, would they do it? Probably not, but it is fun to think about. Shop windows open, guys, go for it, sell yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have I learned my lesson really quickly in the NWSL, I'm good. Uh, but when I look at the other uh, players on the, the list, I mean, there's a couple on the bubble that have just retired. Um, that Louisville is a pretty cool place to live. I lived there for two years myself. I was the assistant coach at the university there back in uh, 2007. It's a great city and uh, it's a really interesting thought that might come up in our draft where we try to pull someone out of retirement that's recently retired, let's be realistic. Yeah, I'm torn with the recently retired because on one hand, like could you pull Lauren Cheney out right now and have her clean house in the league still? Probably yes. Yes. But then today, I thought I was sprinting and I looked down and I ran two miles in 19 minutes. So it's really, you don't know what you're yeah. gonna get. You don't know how much people have been training. Uh, <laughs> So I think, yeah, I think how electric would it be if they just picked all retired players, but like the like really, really, yeah. the ones that really, really storied careers, like hundreds of international caps and world sites. That would be fun. I would like It would be fun. Yeah. I do. I think, I think, I mean, you could pull like, you know, Joe Lohman's on there, Lori Lindsay's on there, Abby's on there, Rachel so Hubler, hard. sorry, I can't pronounce her new last name, is on there, Jill Lloyden. I mean, Cheney, like there are some fun players totally <laughs> unbelievable yeah. players be like That'd wait be till fun. you hear about the new how high the new salaries are guys they'll yeah. be like yeah, we're good um okay <laughs> moving on um i think i mean pretty much all we've got left now is the actual draft is there anything else that anybody feels you know like super compelled to to bring up before we kind of dive into this and then i'll explain how i think we should do it yeah utah don't have a full-time coach. They don't have a full-time coach. Right. They okay. made that like sneaky announcement today with where you had to click the link. I'm like, this is, you're like, this is a, you're literally, this is clickbait. Surprise they didn't put it behind a paywall. <laughs> um, but they should just give the job to Amy. Like, let's go. Yeah, I think Amy's awesome. I'm excited for her to hopefully get the opportunity that I feel like she deserves. But again, I always get mad in this league when there could be a, like, um, I think whether, obviously, it seems, sounds like Craig was let go on some terms that were disappointing for everyone involved, but I think still it's big news, and I wish the league um, didn't try to sneak it in there because, um, for better or for worse, the fans deserve to know what happened. Um, and, yeah, that's how I feel. No, you're 100% right. 100%. They always yeah. like to sneak it under the radar. Like, they ain't, no one's stupid. Yeah. You know? I've learned anything this year from Canada, observing from a, from a distance, genuinely, uh, you know, peripheral sort of observations of the league. Transparency is where they've won everyone over, you know, so there's no reason to go against that value at this point. Um, there's diehard fans, and I think it's very easy to piss off this cohort of fans yeah. because they are so invested, because they're going to click that bait. 
Um, it's a, probably a smaller group than other leagues. It gets compared, but that doesn't matter. They're, they're more invested than other leagues. So I agree with that completely. Transparency gets them everywhere, and they got to continue with that. Well, if I want. Well, if I want. I okay. That bait. I like that. Is that another Drake lyric? Uh, probably. He's, he's ingrained in me for, at this point. So, yeah. You guys share Canadian blood, right? That's how that works? Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. She, she needs to go in a minute because she needs to like roll, roll down the streets with her world. Yeah. <laughs> Importance. <laughs> oh, so okay. Bad. Tim Hortons is so bad. The most overrated thing about Canada is Tim Hortons. Uh, not it's, their, it's, like, it's not their donuts. But it's it's more donuts. overrated than In and Out. I don't like In and Out. Yeah, it sucks. Really? Yeah, they need to edit that because I'll get destroyed if they put that in. Yeah, you're a citizen now, Dave. You can't be. Yeah. yeah. And you can't put down Tim Hortons. That's that's a low blow. What top have you got on there? That's pretty cool. This? Yeah. The Levi's get up. Oh, well, that's sick. Nice. Yeah, it's that's like nice. it's like I'm cool, but a little casual, you know. <laughs> I'm in touch with people. I don't want to. I don't want to get you guys all hyped up too much, but I don't know if you see this purple bad boy I'm wearing right now. But these are, you know, at some point in the next coming weeks, will be on your bodies. So, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, don't get too excited, but that is coming your way. I don't know if that changes how you do things in this draft, but that's more more incentive. Yeah, <laughs> it's more incentive <laughs> to not just log off while we're. While we're <laughs> um. Okay, so here's how I think we should start the draft is I think first and foremost, we should all say whether or not we would pick a US player. A, because that gives that team immunity or are you going the route of I'm Louisville and I'm sort of, you know, aggregating the money. So I think we start there. Um, Steph, you kind of already said what you're gonna do. So why don't you go? Yeah, I think the two, um... I would take Tobin and Press. Um, I think that they are good enough and will go for another cycle with the national team. And because they're going to be going for that next cycle, um, I think it makes, we've seen in the past historically, a lot of U.S. players wanting to be domestically based during that time. So even if you don't get them back from England in the next two to three years, I think those two, when at, I don't know how old, there'll be like 33, 34 playing into their next 2023 World Cup will be more valuable than anyone can get overseas, particularly um, when you take into account you're also building a business, you're building a fan base. Um, and having those two big names would really, really help in terms of attendance. Attendance helps with other players wanting to come there. Um, things kind of fall into place. So that's what I'm doing. All right. I like it. Dave, what are you doing? She just stole exactly what I was going to do. Fuck this up. Which. <laughs> All right. You guys heard earlier. So I would, I was toying between them two and AD as well, because AD's not um, protected mm -hmm. either. Right? But then all the talk of LeBay, you know, might, I'll probably take her. Anyway, yeah, sorry, Press and Tobin. Press and Tobin. Karm, what are you doing? Uh, for no other reason than, you know, uh, the idea that building this team from scratch, uh, I think a brand of football that a young group can, you know, obviously build upon with, uh, with the co the new coach there, Christy, like there's something about just taking the money and doing your best with regards to some other international players that are not going to cost you so much. And, uh, maybe, you know, you have them for longer, you get to actually like, I'm thinking as a coach, I want to have my players there at all times. Uh, and invested. So I'm going to go young. I'm going to go other internationals and I'm going to take the 150 uh, to build my roster and likely in the future, probably year two, three, do what Steph said, which is basically try to at that point uh, bring in some market players. But I want to start fresh with players I can work with. I like that. Um, I actually went the same route. I think you take the money, you try to convince Katerina to come out of school early. Um, Katerina, yes. Yeah, go and get her, get her to come out of school early, make sure she gets paid because she's probably going to get allocated pretty quick. Um, but I think that's, you know, then two, now we've got like two on each side of this, which um, I think another kind of fun piece that then goes into this now too is obviously with if Tobin and Press get selected, that gives immunity to both Portland and Utah 
for the rest of the draft. So then they go out and they effectively save the rest of their team, which for Portland, that's pretty massive. On the same page. Okay, so that and that. Okay, so here's how I'm thinking I wanna do it next versus us running down our whole team. Um, let's do team by team and you give the one or two that you would pick. So I think that's the most fun way to do it. And I think let's go bias first. Houston Dash. If you were Louisville, who are you taking from the Houston Dash? Are you taking one? Are you taking two? And then who are you taking? Steph, you want to go? Or you just, I'm just going to copy you anyway. Yes. Well, I'll go so Dave can copy me. Um, I'm torn because I'm a huge Dash fan. I don't want to see their team broken up. Um, shout out to Christy for winning Dash MVP. MVP? <laughs> COVID player of the year, COVID player of the decade, best pandemic player in history, Christy. That being said, I, forever. I, think, I think I'm going to take Christine Naren. Um, we talked about like the importance of leadership when you're building a young team. Um, I think she's proven over the past five or six years that she's one of the most technical players in the, uh, in the league. Um, she's scored some of the most prolific goals this league has seen. Um, for that reason, I think she's someone that you can build around and younger players could look up to, so I'm taking her. Are you going one or are you going two players from the dash? I'm also going to take to go with her, Brie Vasali, who I think is the opposite. She's super raw, more of an athlete than she is technical. Runs more in one game than I do in one month. Um, so I think <laughs> like the two of them together, uh, you're, you're dipping into two like really important camps in terms of experience and potential. That's my play. I like that. It's a good play. Carm, what do you got? So Penn State Pride, I definitely had Naren as my first go. So uh, I'll have to go first next round <laughs> to avoid the crossover, but excellent choice. Uh, Jamia Fields, just for history in the league. Uh, you talk about that experience, uh, somebody that's going to contribute to that, to that rebuild. Um, and I had an inside tip that's not my own, but I trust this inside information. I don't know if I can expose my, uh, my source, you, but you don't have to. Meg Linehan. She said she would go with Ali Prisok, Prisok, Prisok. So I'm going to trust her. So I'm going to go with Ali Prisok. Does anybody know a lot about her? You got behind that paywall, didn't you? Yeah, did. yeah see. <laughs> who, who, can, can somebody tell me about her? Why would Meg pick her? She was playing defense. She's pretty versatile. She's young, can run for days, definitely raw. Um, but she was playing defense but i think she can play multiple positions so oh, versatility kind of, yeah she she kind of fits that young versatile mode beautiful so if i can't get christine there uh just to correct just to update me on the rules of this don't you have to pick two for team or you do not i don't technically think you have to do anything okay uh, but from the dash, you could pick two because they do not have any U.S. national team players anyways that could nullify that. So you have the opportunity to pick it up to two. Um, so I'm going to stick with my guns principle-wise and go with Ali Prisak and trust Meg because she's an absolute gem. All right. Dave, what do you got? Um, you were like screaming about Penn State pride, but you didn't want to pick Amanda Dennis, which is weird to me. But okay. I know I'm an old school Penn Stater. That's but, a problem. You know, Amanda was like U20 national team goalkeeper. Just throwing it out. No, there. no, goalkeepers, I got, no, no, no. That, I got another plan for that. Her. You could have developed her, but you've been sat there on your Canadian throne. There's another Penn State you, goalkeeper. There's her. another you Penn State goalkeeper. Develop, you want to develop young talent, and there you, and you left her on the bed. That's No, there is another Penn State goalkeeper available. So let's move on. It's not, this isn't about pick your friends, right? Tom. This is about pick your players, not your friends. Friends, I don't even know them. <laughs> I don't even know him. <laughs> okay, I would I would pick um, Brie Vasali because she's been really sparky for the dash. Um, and I would go against Stephanie McCaffrey, yeah. And I'm all about retribution and giving people second chances or third or fourth chances. Um, and also a get out of jail free card. So I'd pick Katie Stengel. Hmm. So, because obviously all that social media drama that happened during the COVID cut. Um, and I, I remember Katie when she was on Pally Blues, like back in the day. And still, I've never seen a player hit a ball so consistently well. 
as a forward. And this was only in practice, but still. And I think she's another one who has not potentialized yet. And I feel like with the right coach and in a new environment, she might be able to shine, you know? I like that. I actually I think we've been talking too much, Dave. I had the same exact two. No way. Davis Ali and Davis Ali and Katie Stegall. Katie. I did think about Naren as well. I like that. I think that's you know like a solid midfielder. She can use both feet. I yeah, mean, just, totally. You know, put, put, I mean, puts the ball on a dime. It's just unbelievable. Um, but I ultimately Stangle. I was between Stangle and Naren, kind of a more established player. But I went ultimately with uh, with Katie. For no other reason what than all the reason, well, what, re what was your reason for Katie? Because I gave a little, little speech about You did. Um, I think, again, I look at these, all of these players, right, are effectively players you're getting for nothing. You know, you're, you're not giving up anything to get them. And, you know, if you go from like a value, you're right, you're right. If you're going for, for a value perspective, I think the value and the upside, Katie's still young. And I think you're right. You know, it's, you know, shit happens. Um, and as long as you kind of learn from that and move on, and um, I think, you know, in the right scenario and in the right place, like she's, when she was playing her best for Utah, she was lights out, absolutely lights out. She was the leading scorer on a team that had A-Rod and Press for a while, you know? I mean, she could be really, really good. Was she the player who uh, spent some time in Australia as well and did decently over there? I think she did play. Um, yeah, I believe she was there. I, I, mean, I know she was on Canberra once, but I didn't cross over with her there. Okay, gotcha. You did. All right, let's go uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Carm, you look excited. What? Are we doing, how are we, how are we doing this? Am I first this time or Dave's first? No, you're first. Go first. I don't want to, you got to get a spark right now. I don't want to kill it, you know? Well, listen, this, is, this was one of the easier ones for me. I already mentioned this in my strategy, Steph Labbe, building around her leadership distribution. Um, she has improved in, even later in her, in her career. I know she probably only has one year left, self-declared. That's not me retiring her. That's her retiring herself. So um, I think there's something around her giving her all in an Olympic year. But she's going to be gone for a little bit, but she gets to lead the younger goalkeepers that are going to be following her. So I know it's a short-term game for hopefully a long-term investment or, or impact. Um, and then I'm going to go with Havana Salon as well. I love her versatility. I think she's a tremendous player um, and would add to the depth in the midfield, if not uh, be a star role, uh, depending on the mix there. But I really see Havana uh, doing a great job uh, to, to build around as well. And she has international experience, Jamaica, scored a World Cup goal. Yeah, I think she she's, has a lot of years ahead of her as well. Carmi, little tidbit is making me reconsider now. No worries. That's, that's what this all is all about. Like you said, I know. You have like some good insider info that I did not have. So that's cool. Dave, what do you got? Um, great picks, Carm. Thank you. Um, I'm copying Carm and taking Steph LeBay. Um, just because I feel like Steph is like, she's one of those keepers in the league that's proven it like year after year after year after year that she's like rock solid, right? Um, and I am going to take Kerry Recaro. And you're going to hear this a lot, but I think Kerry's another one with the right guidance can shine. Like she was on all the youth national teams in the US. Um, and I still rate her. Kerry is a player who needs a coach who is going to big her up and make her feel amazing and then you'll get the best out of Kerry Ricardo. So I'm gonna take Kerry Ricardo. Good pick. All right, Steph, what do you got? Taking Steph LeBay, one great mm. name, two, same license <laughs> as Dave and Carm. Um, but second, I'm going Allie Watt. Uh, she's a great young player who unfortunately tore, tore ACL in the Challenge Cup. Um, that being said, I think she's only 21 or 22 years old and has a very bright future ahead of her. Um, I think she would have been protected if she wasn't on the most stacked roster in the league. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm going with Walker. All right. I had actually picked Steph LeBay and Allie Watt. Um, I've second-guessed myself a little bit 
with the fact that, you know, if, if she really is only planning to play one more year, but, um, you know, I'll stick with it and maybe they, they go a little bit younger, um, on that sense. But those were the two that I had picked as well. Cause I agree, you know, you want, I mean, Steph is proven it's, you know, they know she's going to miss a little bit of time. That's fine. But I mean, even if it is a year, you know, she is somebody that will go in and just bring a calmness that you might not get it, that if you immediately went with the younger keeper um, or somebody who is less proven. So uh, I like that pick. And, you know, I think North Carolina too, picking up Casey Murphy. Um, I, I think in a lot of ways, her, Caitlin Rowland and Casey being on the same team just doesn't really seem practical. And that's one of those ones where you see that and you're like, all right, is there something already going on that we, you know, or are there some kind of handshake conversation, you know, uh, back alley deals that we don't know about that, uh, you know, it, it looks like that she'll end up there and they kind of do right by her, even though they're making the switch to Casey. So I'm, uh, I'll, I'll stick with the pick despite the uh, concern that that brought in. <laughs> concern was a tough word. Okay, Orlando Pride. This was a, this was a pretty interesting unprotected uh, list all the way across the board. But uh, obviously I'm playing there and seeing them. I, there's a lot of players that I think would do well, A, both to be in a different environment, but also a lot of players that uh, I just also really can't see leaving. So I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see what you guys think. I think Dave's turn, right, to go first? We'll do sort of- It is Dave. Thank you, Carl. It's very Canadian. No, no worries Canadian. at all. Good like that. So I can only, I've, I've picked my two national team players, huh? You did pick your two national That's team players. Because I, I would have picked Krieger and then forced him to trade me Krieger for Sonnet. But I can't, so I won't. <laughs> I think I that, know. yeah. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up Tony Presley and Camilla, and I'm going to force a trade because you, you know Tony wants to be in Orlando. So I'm going to force a trade and try and get Sonnet. So I'm using, I'm being very manipulative with that. But that's what that's I'm going to do. Sonnet does love Waffle House. That's really, I think, the only thing that that trade has going for it. <laughs> I think there's Waffle Houses. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's where I'm going with that. Um, and Camilla, she's clever. Yeah. Camilla's one for me that I agree. I think if you get Camilla, Camilla at her best, everybody was talking about Camilla like, Pre Camilla pre injury, everyone was like talking about her the way that they're now talking about Dabinia, mm -hmm. right? They're like, she's she's it, she's the next Marta, she's the next big thing. And I do, I agree. I think if you can get Camilla back into that zone, I mean, we see how lights out Dabinia is. So it, I, she has it in her. She 100% has it in her. Yeah, definitely. All right, who's next? Steph, you want to go? Yes. Well, I think that argument just caused my first vote change. I am also going to go Camilla. Um, to be honest, some people just get hidden in, in this list because they're one of the groups that every unprotected player has parentheses next to their name. They're yeah. either unpro yeah, they're either a U.S. player or you yeah, have playing rights. It's a mess. And in retrospect, I think it was a good distraction. Maybe they're hoping that some people can fall through the cracks. Um, so I'm going Camilla. Um, I'm also going to go Carson Pickett. Um, I've always just hated playing against her. Um, and this, she's just super hardworking, great on both sides of the ball. Um, I just remember having miserable day. Like I wasn't happy anytime I played against her. So for that reason, I don't, I would want to deal with her if I was on another team. So I'm going with her. Good picks. What do we got, Carm? All right. So I'm going with Kanya Plummer, international Nathan. center back. Yeah. Uh, did some, actually did some scouting on her, uh, just uh, unrelated to this. So there's something around her, uh, her ability in the back line, just sort of for me, building from the back is a little bit of my strategy. So I think she has uh, fantastic years ahead of her and cops, you would have more insight than me, but from an outsider's perspective, I think she's a very exciting player. Um, the other international, so I went through the gamut. I mean, the European wildcard is still so unknown, but I'll never turn down a left-footed center back. 
not only because she's Canadian, but I think left-footed center backs give you a whole other dimension that, that right-footers can't give you, and that's speaking from experience. Um, so I'm definitely going with uh, Shalina and the, the connection with Steph, I think would be lights out if we can get her to come back uh, from Europe. So I know that's a risky choice, but I'm assuming she's coming back in an Olympic year to be closer to Canada and their potential camps or objectives. I don't know the story, to be fair. But yeah, I'm going with Shalina and Kanya to play alongside each other. Picks. All right. I had Carson Pickett. Um, she was my first one. I think a true, there's not a lot of true left-footed outside backs in the league right now. Mm -hmm. like you've got a lot of girls that are, you know, obviously they've done a good job, but just, there's not a lot of natural lefties. And I think with Jaylene retiring too, like that position becomes even more valuable. Um, and with her not really getting a lot of minutes there, I just can't, I can't imagine her being there that much longer. And this feels like a good time for, for somebody to come and pick her up. Um, the second one, this was harder for me. I ultimately went with Tony. Um, I agree at Dave. I don't think she'll leave. Um, but in the same sense, I don't think a change of scenery at the end of the day uh, is necessarily a bad thing. I also think my other one that I kind of was back and forth on was Emily Van Egmond. Um, yes. Nice. Having it, the opportunity to pick up, you know, such a, uh, she's one of those like Aussies that's, you know, played in 11 World Cups before the time she was nine and a half. <laughs> um, where like just one so of those, true. you can't replace that experience, you know, and getting an international player on a good deal, I think, especially from a salary cap standpoint is a big deal. So I'm ultimately, I'm going to go Carson and Emily Van Egmond. I just talked myself into it and I talked myself out of Tony. May I add something along these lines when we're Please. talking about cost and things? So as of today, and I can only base strategy on what we know, what we know today, what tomorrow can be different. But um, the, the other reason I went with those internationals, because she definitely crossed my mind, Van Egman, of course. Uh, but the reason was because it doesn't cost the teams anything. We don't, Canadians don't cost them anything. So that, that uh, bolsters their bottom line. So that was another reason. But I like what you're saying, because I don't know, for example, would other foreign internationals take up a lot of the salary cap? I yeah. think the answer is yes, right? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, Just Canadians, yeah, any, I mean, a U.S. player too, I think it's actually only 20 or 25 grand. I don't know the exact tally right now, but that's all it costs your team a year to have an allocated player, be it Canadian or, or from the U.S., which Got obviously it. is a very, very good deal. Brilliant. Okay, cool. Just making sure. All right. Um, let's go. We'll do those teams last since we already have players selected from them. Let's go Seattle Rain, which yes. nobody picked up Pino in the, uh, in the original go-around. Steph, you're up first. Oh boy. Um, yeah, this list was wild. Is there one player that they left unprotected that isn't retired other than Pino? Like, I was looking at this list. It's crazy. Playing rights, playing rights, playing rights, playing rights, playing rights. Um, ultimately, I'm not going to take Pino. I think um, she's really happy in Seattle. I think they particularly would have a very hard time getting her to leave. Um, if I was going to go with first, uh, Taylor Smith, I think she's super athletic, super versatile. Um, I think she was starting to hit her stride when she unfortunately tore her ACL. Um, but I think she's one of from a, like one of the best pure athletes in the league, um, and someone that I think you can extract a lot from with a new coach in a new environment. Um, and next, I'm going to go with Jasmine Spencer. Mm -hmm. um, I went back and forth on this for a while. I just think she's proven that she can score goals. Um, and when she's not scoring goals, she's causing a lot of problems and opening things up with other, for other people. Uh, she's someone that when she's played with allocated national team players who teams tend to double down and give a lot of attention to, um, when she's been left alone, she's punished back lines. Um, so for that reason, I'm taking her. I think this will be a fun one because this team has a lot of, I went like a very different route. I'll go next because I keep going last. Yeah, go next. Yeah. Okay, so I picked Julia Ashley and Shirley Cruz. Um, I thought Shirley was, for a lot of this season, one of their like lone bright spots. Um, not lone bright spots, but you know, they, they kind of had a more difficult year. They weren't scoring a lot of goals, but I thought Shirley was really, really good. I was actually surprised they left her unprotected, which makes me like 
a little bit nervous that if you know somebody else picked her up she'd be like I'm French now I'm playing for the other French rain team <laughs> um and then Julia Ashley I, I think she's kind of been someone that keeps like hasn't quite found her landing spot yet I like I don't necessarily see her in the rain's plans um and I think she could you know she's a long-term someone who could be in the national team picture so those are my two very nice go, go ahead go ahead no you after you please come oh we're now you're being a little bit canadian too um i did pick jasmine spencer and shirley cruz for the reasons you ladies mentioned so i think we're saying that if others picked it we can't pick that right or are we saying we're doubling up and adding rationale oh yeah you can you can just double down Double down. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, per, I played against jazz, uh, in, in Australia. So I remember just, um, I know she's grown a lot, obviously that was a long time ago, but I do have experience with how, uh, she's at, at times she can be undefendable with, to your point, uh, the bright players around her, uh, her timing of her running her blind spots. Like she's getting a little bit even better every year that I've seen her in the league. So I would pick jazz. I think she's capable of even more to be fair. And I just like her personality. I think she has a great uh, unity uh, type of cohesion aspect to her, uh, to the pick, which a new team needs. Um, and I know Morgan Andrews had a lot of hype around her. And I know it hasn't necessarily come to full fruition, uh, but you can't go from tons of the hype to nothing without giving a second chance. So I think a fresh start for Morgan Andrews would, um, would give her some, probably some due motivation and hope uh, to get a new start for Louisville. So I'm going to go Morgan Andrews. I think she needs another chance. All right, Dave. Um, I'd just like to tell you all that Carl Mascato is a genius. <laughs> First one I would pick is Morgan Andrews. And you two are crazy. Okay. So, again, potentially, I uh, know facts. Facts. That girl could be a top midfielder in the world. Facts. And, you know, Steph's from around her way. So Steph's going to have that, like, no, nah, I'm the best New Englander in the world thing going on. <laughs> but Morgan can manipulate a ball like very few people can manipulate a ball. She reads the game really well. Um, I would love to see her shine and shove it down some people's throats um, who have written her off. So Morgan would be my first pick and then I would take Shirley Cruz because Shirley Cruz is in it all like she's always good yeah totally. you know she's always good I, I think Carm you can attest to this too mm -hmm. knowing Bill I just like can't see it in my heart though that this is, draft is like going on without you know like 700 no. little things going on in the background Without a doubt, there's uh, that's the stuff that we would be most like. I would love for them to do just an, a podcast about this, maybe in four years after it's all said and done, and just understand what goes on behind the scenes. But you're right, Bill is uh, he's 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 ten steps ahead of us of the league. <laughs> he's incredible. All right, uh, let's go Sky Blue FC. Which I gotta say, like Sky Blue, you know, as this like Challenge Cup and everything kind of went on, I feel mm -hmm. like Sky Blue you know, went from being this team that, I mean, A, literally their own play players were like, you know, blowing them up um, in the media, rightfully so as well, based on like their conditions, to like being this place you root for and a place where like players seemingly want to be. Um, and I, at, at different points this year, like, you know, you like try to watch the game and you're like, oh, I'm not biased. And then you're like, no, I'm biased. I'm actually rooting for Sky Blue right now. But I'm, not <laughs> even sure, I'm not even sure why, but I'm, I'm cheering for Sky Blue. Um, so this, I actually, I kind of, I thought their list was pretty well done. I thought they left a lot of their defense, um, unprotected, but I'm eager to see what you guys think. Carm. Dave, Dave, you want me to go first? Yes, please. Yeah. I love Estelle Johnson. I've loved her uh, every time. Even at Washington, I thought she was tr a tremendous leader. What she did in the World Cup for Cameroon. I mean, um, she for me is an undeniable player. Again, you give good challenges to the back line. I know I've already picked a pretty defensive 
team so far, but I think she fits in and I think she can play outside back because I've seen her play in a three back as well. And she can cover the flanks well. So um, Estelle, uh, champion for me all the way. And I struggled because I know there's a lot of players like Elizabeth Eddy. She's like always pushing her own boundaries and she's in Europe every time. Like she's hungry. Um, so she's crossed my mind uh, of what she can do for the team. Um, so she's another one I was considering, but okay, I'm going to summarize here. I'm talking a lot. I'm going to go with Estelle Johnson and I'm going to go with thought about Caprice as well, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick with my gut and go Elizabeth Eddy as a striker. I need to balance out my uh, selections. So she'll play up front for me. I like that. Steph, what do you got? Oh, I feel like I need, you know, those timeouts that every team gets 500. <laughs> yeah. Like I need a timeout because this, um, I agree with Carm. I'm definitely going to Stella Johnson. I think sometimes for whatever reason, young defensive players in this league tend to struggle. Um, so mm -hmm. in the draft, I think your best bet is to grab like more attacking minded players and you should shell up any kind of defensive experience you can while it's there. Um, if I'm sky, sky blue, I think it's insane that they did leave us still unprotected, but that's their loss in Louisville's game. So I'm taking her. Um, and then I think I'm torn between Elizabeth Eddy and who did I have? I'm torn between Elizabeth Eddy. Jesus noodle. I'm torn between Elizabeth Eddy and Mandy Freeman. Um, again, uh, I think Elizabeth Eddy is a little bit of a wild card, but a wild card that's good for team chemistry um, and who can do some like really unexpected things that like tend to bear good fruit for the team. Yeah. Um, Mandy Freeman hasn't performed, I think, as well as I think she could has could have yet. Uh, I think she's a defensive player with a lot of potential, and like I just mentioned, defensive potential support in this league. So I'm going to take them. All right, Dave, what do you got? Um, I swear, like, Steph's just stealing my players. I'm going for Mandy Freeman. Again, like, it's exciting. Steph's said really, like, Mandy, like, she was meant to be better, right? And I don't think she's lost that. I just think maybe she needs another place to, to play, you know? Um, and... For experience, Gina Lewandowski. Mm. Hot take. Mm. I actually went for Gina as well. Good one. Um, I the Estelle, leaving Estelle unprotected to me, like I don't know, like I just like almost don't believe it. And I think I went for like the effective. I'm like I just feel like there's no way, or like she's. I, and I don't know the answer to this. I'm like, maybe she's like nursing some injury because I know that they were messing with their back line a lot. Like I just, like I almost am in disbelief that they, even if they were to go out and trade her, mm -hmm. to not, I mean, you could get a lot of value for her. Um, so I went with Gina um, and I actually reunited uh, uh, Christy Holly with Erica Skorosky who she's just been in, she's kind of one of those, she's been in the league a long time. I know she's been in the same place, but um, yeah, I, I just, I feel like, you know, he kind of goes for that like solid roster. Um, when she was one of the few kind of leftover players from from when he was a coach before and, and I could see him making a play for her. That makes a lot of sense. Going back with familiarity. Cool. Yeah, watch them like hate each other. Watch me say that. No, oh, f that guy. I'm like, oh god, I'm sorry. I really misread that situation there. <laughs> misread the situation. <laughs> sorry, my interpersonal skills are lacking. Um, <laughs> Social cues. <laughs> all right, we have got the. Let's do the Washington Spirit. Mm. I had a hard time with this one, admittedly. I had a hard time. First. Did anyone else have a hard time with this one or? Uh, <laughs> apart from bringing Laurie Lindsay out of retirement, it was quite a difficult one. Bringing Joe um, and Lindsay out of retirement, giving it a go. My, my first choice was easy. I'm going first, is that all right? Yeah, go for it. Um, my first choice was easy with Jesse Scarpa. Um, don't sleep on Jesse Scarpa. Like, Jesse's good. Like, she was a UNC kid. She's unfortunate with injuries. But, 
Jessie's like technically wildly good, right? She's a very, very good forward. So I picked Jessie first. And then, I, I, you know, I'm thinking we need a backup goalkeeper. So I'm just taking Devon Kerr as my backup goalkeeper. She's got the height. Yeah, she's decent. In training video, she's really good. Training oh, are you coming out of retirement, Cobb? I would have picked you, but you ain't coming out of retirement. I know. My name's not on the list. No, I'm not. I'm drinking wine on a... Uh, <laughs> literally by myself. So don't think I'm giving any vibes that I'm coming out of retirement. <laughs> Steph, you want to go next? I had trouble with this one, admittedly. So I don't know if you're good to go. Yeah, I did too. Um, but ultimately, I settled on... Kumi, um, I think she did some really good things in the league. I think she's super talented. Um, I don't really have any insight on whether or not she would come back to the U.S. to play or would go to Kentucky, but I think she brings a technical flair that they might not get with the younger, kind of more raw players that I think they're ultimately going to have, that they'll ultimately settle with. Or not settle, but end up picking like naturally because um, new teams tend to err on the side, the younger side. Um, and then I'm going with Megan Doherty Howard. Uh, she's just really, really solid and really, really physical. Uh, and I think based on my picks, I've given them a lot of people that are either super technical or super athletic. Um, having someone in there that can come in hard and set a tone um, of physicality and challenging and winning first and second falls will be an important balance for them. So that's why I went with her. Carm, what do you got? I have a strong reason for this. Uh, I'm going to go with Jenna Hellstrom because I've built my core. I've built my spine of my team. I, hard, I don't have fullbacks yet. Um, having played with her, uh, not coached her formally, but been in environments where I was the coach and she was on the team, uh, watching her on both sides of, of it. I mean, she's an absolute nightmare to play against. Like you don't want to go up against Jenna. I'm very coachable, very open-minded. Um, and we'll put in a great shift for what will prove, you know, this league is very transitional. And I think she thrives uh, in that environment over organization. So I think that her athleticism, her willingness to be coached um, and her eagerness will, will complement the team I've, I've started to put together. You picking one or you going two? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. Okay. I had a, a, Kumi as well. Um, I'm, I'm also a little confused as to them leaving her unprotected, which makes you think, you know, is she coming back? Is she not? But, you know, the idea of her and Yuki teaming up again, I, I think that that's super exciting um, and would be a great base for any team. Um, and then I had Crystal Thomas. And I say this, every, every game I have played or sat and watched <laughs> against <laughs> Washington Spirit, Crystal Thomas, like one out of every two or three games just has this like absolute sniper goal. <laughs> kind of one of those that you, at, you know, first glance, you probably wouldn't throw in your starting 11 and then she like earns a spot, you know, mm. by the end of it. Cause she just produces and then you come on late and she's just like a little fireball. So um, she was my, she was my second choice. Um, from that team mm -hmm. she was my second choice okay um moving on this is where it gets fun now uh portland thorns mm -hmm. and even though you guys already selected somebody because you know we're not the ones doing this and this doesn't matter we'll still let you pick oh wow, wow. like wow. Are ten days and had you not picked them what would you do or you can give insight we'll have carmen i go first and then you guys could give the what would I have done inside? So we're not, so we are allowed to pick. You're allowed, yeah, you're allowed. But like, don't pick, you know, don't just don't pick who you already picked. Like if you could, let's say you had not taken the route you'd decided to go down, which makes, you know, no sense that we're doing it this way, but here we are. Carm, who did you have from Portland? It's a little bit, it was, this one was one of my easier choices. Although the there's a wide variety of players available with tons of different variables. Eckerstrom. That choice. So for me, that's a that's a match made in heaven. She's the long term choice for me. And then I look at Angela Salem. I mean, character through the roof, team connector, 
uh, great player when given the chance. And so whether she factors into a starting lineup or team cohesion off the bench impact player, either way, um, I've always been a big fan of Ange personally and professionally. So um, I think she still has a lot to give as well. I literally have the same too. <laughs> cool. So I'm not crazy. Love that. <laughs> I mean, we might be, this hasn't happened yet. We might be like, that's way true. <laughs> I spoke too soon. That's true. Might be way, way off base. Um, yeah, no, but look, I mean, same reasons, you know, I don't even need to, to drive it home. I, you know, I think, you know, that Steph's going to be in and out for as long as she plays with national team stuff. But I also think those two will push each other, you know, and it, Mm -hmm. and so any realistically I think most goalkeeping scenarios in this league should be you know it should yeah. be a situation where you've got somebody behind you and your spot's not just guaranteed mm -hmm. uh, all right uh I gave you guys about 11 seconds to prepare Steph let's say uh you didn't pick Tobin yeah I'll go first so Dave can end on a good note and not feel like he was still his ideas were stolen again he can go to bed happy um but no, I think I go Angela Salem. Um, when I played with her in Boston, uh, like Carm said, like from a player perspective and a person perspective, she's a veteran. I think that could lead that team in that midfield. Um, she just has a nose for consistently and always winning first and second balls. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something in this league, you see a lot of pockets of talent technically or athletically, but she has an intangible set that I think is special and unique and has driven a really, really successful and great career for her. Um, and then I'm also going to go Eckerstrom. I think given that I picked LeBay, um, it's pretty consistent that that makes sense for all of the choices that you guys mentioned. Fantastic choices, Stephanie. Thanks to you. And very, very good explanations as to why. Thank you. Um, I would, obviously I said in the group chat that I would pick Nadine Angora. Um, <laughs> But I'm not going to do it. Okay, I don't want to steal their, their two, one though. You get the coach and the you it's know. True. It's true, but I've already got two keepers now. Mm, that's true. So I am going to pick Becky, and I'm going to get a trade back. I can. Can I pick Becky? If I, I can. Well, like, you, you could pick Becky instead of Tobin. Oh, no, you said I haven't picked them. So I know, I but, like, that's, uh, yes, you're right. I mean, I guess if this, I mean, sure, yeah, there's really no rules here. I don't know why it would be a rule that I really don't, you know, I don't give a shit about. Really, so, like, I respect your green room, so my rules. <laughs> national team players are off the table. I respect your rules. Okay. Or you, you could, you just could only pick one. Okay, I'm I'm going to take Kristen Westfall because I'm biased with players I work with. That's fair. And I also feel like for Portland in COVID Cup and for COVID Cup, she was class. Like she played one game that I was like, all right, you could do better there. But every other game, she was rock solid. And I feel like she's also flipped the mental switch where she's just playing a lot more confident and her through balls aren't hit and hope the texture through balls to the right player and she's looking to get that ball to bounce as that player wants that ball to bounce right and that that is very rare so I would pick Kristen and she'd probably kill me for that because I know she loves it in Portland so apologies if she watches this um, and pick Angela Salem um, and like uh, a lot of it with, with Ange isn't so much what she's going to do on the field. It's going to be how she ties the group together. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like Angie's one of those players where no one's got anything bad to say about her. No. Right? And I've known her for, for a long time. She used to come up the field in Beverly Hills and play and train. That was almost 10 years ago. And she's always been the same. So I feel like that's an important part to have on a new team is a player who's going to invest in making sure every other player is also doing good. So, yeah, she should probably write that down. I'm not usually that nice about people. <laughs> we'll have to do like, you know, this like little Angela Salem love fest that we all just, should we get it? I mean, like just 
Like she's gonna earn a hug from all of us when we see her. <laughs> uh, social distance hug. Oh yeah, like yeah. not a real hug. True. Um, okay, last team. We've got the Utah Royals that should be coached by full-time head coach, Amy LaFelda. Yes. Same thing. I know that you guys would have, you know, null technically nullified yourselves with the press pick, but we'll we'll put you on the spot. Carm, do you want to go first then, and we'll we'll give you the others time to pick. Yes, um, a little bit of a, a nerd. My only spot left is a right back, and I'm going to go with Gunny for that. Oh, uh, wow. I'd uh, I'd try to pronounce it, but that would be uh, unfair to her. But I know she's a recently converted fullback. Um, Another same profile, a sim, excuse me, similar profile uh, to what I would have chosen Jenna for. Same idea, just hard nosed. Uh, we'll do the dirty work, transitional game, um, and I think she has that uh, international experience that that I'm going for as a big theme for my my selections. And then I'm going to go with D Scott, Desiree Scott for me, a Canadian focus. You guys need to, to expect that from from me, but I would never I would never bet against a destroyer. You know, for what she potentially, you know, lacks in sort of distribution, which is her biggest criticism. I don't necessarily agree in it all the way, but uh, she'll bring in defensive qualities on or off the bench. Uh, she'll be, you know, closing a game for us, or um, she would be able to solidify a new team, which you need that uh, screen in front of you that you're able to manage. So I'm pretty happy with my set my uh, my back line and uh, Desiree and sitting in front. Can I just can I just say that that would be another fantastic Drake lyric never bet against the destroyer <laughs> I'm full of them we should do like a little, a little montage I'm starting to believe you're his ghostwriter <laughs> you know what's not the first person that said that to me no you are I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> you totally are so that's uh, me I love that I also had the destroyer Yazzie Scott mm -hmm. I mean I I don't think there's anybody better kind of playing that role than, than that. Um, you know, just sitting in front of that back line, she's just, she's, she's a calming effect and she's also like going to blow you up um, at yeah. the same time. So I also had Desi Scott and my other pick was Mallory Weber. Um, okay. And she, I pick her cause I think she could play forward. She could play left back. She could play right back. She was kind of, you know, you want those like all purpose players that, you know, like when seven, A, she can go in there and, you know, thrive and do really well, but also like she can fill in and start and play really anywhere on the field. I haven't seen her in the net yet, but, um, you know, I, I won't hold that against her. I think <laughs> but anywhere else, I mean, she can play and she has played and she's done it and started in this league. Great stuff. Dave? Um, well, up until today, it was Vero. But, um, yeah, Vero, her announcement. Yeah, she's gone to Milan. And yeah. obviously, like, purely because Vero is one of the best who have ever done it, right? Like, yeah, she, ever. She's a little Spanish wizard. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go against the grain. Okay. I'm taking Lauren Cheney's uh, playing right. Um, for a reason, because I still think Cheney's not done. When did she do with her second baby? Not to throw a total wrench in your plan, but when does uh, she? I believe they announced their second pregnancy. So, like, is, is this like a long game? Does it matter? No, Cheney could step on the field now and out and skin all of us. I don't. I don't doubt it. Like, like legitimate. Like, I think that's not a bad little bet. Um, and then, you know, get on the phone and be like, listen, do what uh, Brazil did with Romario. Listen, you don't have to come to training, <laughs> show up on game day and just hold it down. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the destroyer just to annoy Khan. Oh my God. I was going to say, well, why not? You got to give a good reason. Just to annoy Carm, and I'm going to take Ariel Ship because she like, sneaky gets in and does stuff. It was out of it was out of Ariel Ship and Taylor Lydell. Because Taylor's another one; like, she's solid. 
Mm -hmm. She's never going to get the headlines. She's never going to be that like, super fashionable player, but she's a solid league player. Um, and I just couldn't pick any Canadians just to annoy her. <laughs> no worries. I've taken them all anyway. It's all good. <laughs> they have a home. They have a home. Yeah. I'm going to go one down the fairway pick um, with Desiree Scott. I think she's the one of the two clear best active players on this list, other than press. Um, even though, again, I, I'm in agreement, Cheney would skin us all live. I don't think she's going to come back. Um, so, Scott, for all the reasons everyone's mentioned, I'm then going to go and bet on Barrow. Um, I think that she has shown a tendency to bop back and forth between teams every one or two years. I don't think it's crazy that she'd want kind of a last hurrah in the U.S., and I think she has five years left in her, um, given that I don't think anyone else on this list will change Louisville's life. The bet, the bet for Barrow as her last NWSL stand um, is a good one. So I'm going there. Steph, I don't think I've ever agreed with you so much in an hour and a half in my life. <laughs> You're only human, Dave. I should know. <laughs> is that, that was legit. Though. Forget about finance. Oh. Yeah. Throw that MBA right out the window. Right? Major in NWSL draft rigging. <laughs> rigging. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love that we're all, again, and I mean, this is probably the fun reality of it, but like, I, I can only imagine how many more things or trades or blocks, you know, there, there, this seems like kind of also like a ripe situation, like what you said, where, you know, you pick up somebody with like the in intention to announce some like bombshell trade right away, which seems but I did feel like with Orlando, we knew that that was going to happen. Like Alex to Orlando was kind of the world's worst kept secret. Um, yeah, yeah. This time I really, as of now, I haven't heard anything. Yet. And I don't also think that there are that many national team girls with like ties to the state of Kentucky, really. Gilliland. If there's anyone, it's on it. Waffle House. And <laughs> But Erin, Erin does have roots there. But I, is she coming back after, is she coming back, Erin? She did come back and play. Oh, then definitely. She was a great, we recruited her at Louisville at the time, but she went to Kentucky, obviously. Great player. Yeah, UK, right? Yeah, she went to UK. We, we loved her. We wanted her at uh, Louisville. Yeah. But, um, okay, well, I needed. We just, we just oof, opened a wound there, didn't we, Come, Sorry. Oh, no, it's all good. It's all good. We, it's fine. We got some Canadians instead. It was fine. I think that there's going to be a lot of dodgy dealings going on in the next week. Um, I'm excited to see it because I love drama as long as it's not my drama. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing it in the next few weeks. Um, and I'm also looking forward to you three coming out of retirement for this. Yep. <gasps> I'm looking forward to my recreational soccer career. Um, <laughs> yeah, nothing. Shame on Dave. Shame that Dave didn't have his own organic ideas. You would think that, given that he's probably the closest to the NWSL trained the players, he wouldn't be stealing from a Wharton NBA frat star. But here we are. Tough break for just one sport. Right, if I'm going to steal, I'm going to steal from the best. Glad I can help. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, wow. I, I want to thank all of you, Dave, Steph, Carm. Thank you guys so, so much um, for taking time to do this. Um, you know, I, A, it's a pleasure to talk with all of you, but also obviously, you know, just giving the NWSL the attention kind of that it deserves and the analysis that it deserves from, you know, such incredible soccer minds um, and Houston Dash fans is, is massively important. Um, so uh, thank you guys truly from the bottom of my heart and from everybody at Just Women's Sports that uh, we're, we're so excited that we could pull this together and get this done. And, uh, Hopefully uh, we can do something fun again soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good to see you, everybody. Talk Later. to you.